everyone. In this video, we're going to continue looking at how to find the area between the graphs of a couple of functions. However, in this case, we're going to be looking at how to do that by partitioning the y-axis instead of the x-axis. So in the last video, and in the past, we have been finding the area underneath the graph of a function by partitioning the x-axis. Now sometimes that's not necessarily possible because maybe we're given equations in terms of y. So maybe they're not functions in terms of x, but they are functions in terms of y. And if that's the case, we're gonna end up having to partition the y-axis instead of the x-axis. So just to show you what I mean, let's start by just taking a look at a picture. So let's say we have a couple functions in terms of y. So here, these aren't functions in terms of x, so that means that they fail the vertical line test. However, this is going to pass the horizontal line test, so it's a function in terms of y. So let's say that this is the graph of x is equal to f of y. And let's put a second one in here. So now let's say our second one looks something like this. Again, definitely not a function because it fails the vertical line test, but it is a function in terms of y. So we'll do x is equal to, and for this one, let's call this g of y. So now in this case, I wanna find the area of the region bounded by these two graphs. And instead of vertical lines, let's put in some horizontal lines that act as the other bounds for this. So then let's say this is A, and this is B, and then here's the bottom. So the area that we're looking at is everything in between the two graphs and the two horizontal lines. And so as you can see, the left and the right borders of the region that we're looking at are these two functions of Y. If we compare that to what we were doing previously, we had the upper and the lower borders of our region were functions in terms of X. So we're switching from X to Y here, basically. So now if we want to find the area of this region, we're going to use a very similar approach that we did when we were partitioning along the x-axis. However, in this case, we're going to be partitioning along the y-axis. So we're going to take this interval from A to B, we'll split that up into subintervals, and within each one, we're going to be looking at these horizontal rectangles. The height of this rectangle is going to be delta y instead of delta x, and then the width of the rectangle, since now we're looking at functions in terms of y, we can say that this point is going to be f of some value, let's say it's v sub i, and then here, let's say this is another one, and we'll say that this is g of v sub i. So if I take this value, f of v sub i, and I subtract the value g of e sub i, that will give me the width of that rectangle. Or more generally, if I do the integral from a to b of my function f of y times dy, that will give me the area in between the graph of f of y and the y-axis. Here, just comparing that to f of x, so now we have a dy instead of dx. And then if I subtract the integral from a to b of g of y dy, that will give me the area. So the second integral here gives me the area in between the graph of g y and that y axis. So if I subtract these two, the first integral gives me the area, the whole thing, so in between my graph in blue and the y-axis. And then if I take away that second integral, which gives me the area here in between the graph of g and my y-axis, all I'm gonna be left with is the area in between them. And just like we saw before, we can use the properties of integrals to write this as a single integral from a to b. 
and then we're gonna do f of y minus g of y and we have our dy and just like before there are a couple things that we can note about this the first and the most important thing is the graph of f of y all of these values need to be bigger than everything we have on the graph of g of y so in this case these are x values so all the x values for my graph of f of y they're all greater than all the x values for the graph of g of y within the interval that we're looking at just like before if at some point so let's say our graph here curved down this way and they intersected well now at this point let's say this has a value of c i would actually have to switch them so from b to c we could do um, f of y minus g of y and then from a to c we would actually have to do g of y minus f of y and the other thing to note is it doesn't matter if we're on the right hand side of the y-axis or the left hand side just like we saw before even if the graph of one of my function goes into the negative x values here taking the integral with respect to y so dy anything that's to the left of the y-axis is going to count as a it's going to have a negative value associated with it and everything works out okay so very similar formula but now because we weren't dealing with functions in terms of x we we're dealing with functions in terms of y we needed to partition along the y-axis but other than that it looks almost the same so now let's try this out in an example all right so my example here says find the area of the region enclosed by the graphs of f of y is equal to y plus 2 and my second one g of y is equal to y squared just like before it's a really good idea to sketch out your graph just to see what you're working with so let's take a look here and see what we have so our first one is linear so f of y is equal to y plus 2 if i do a little bit of rearranging with that that is the same as y is equal to x minus 2 so we have a line with a y-intercept of negative 2 and it has a slope of positive 1 so it crosses the x-axis at positive 2 here and here and connecting those together we have our line so like so and now our second one so this is x is equal to y squared which is going to be a sideways parabola so it has a vertex at 0 0 and now it's going to have the normal parabola shape so I can go to 1 and 1 here and also down below at negative 1 so that's negative 1 positive 1 so we have two points like this if I go all the way out to 4 then I'm going to be up at the value of 2 and negative 2 so negative 2 here and then here we'll be up at so connecting these together with a nice smooth parabola and it does continue on but it looks like we have that point of intersection and then connecting that down here as well and we have the intersection here at 1 negative 1 and then the region that we want to find is everything in between these two so I'm taking a look at where they do intersect because we need to think about what sort of bounds we want to put on our integral. So they intersect here at negative 1 and then they intersect again up here at positive 2. And again just taking a look at this because we have functions in terms of y we want to partition the y-axis. So we're going to end up putting in essentially little rectangles horizontal rectangles the width of each of these rectangles or the height of each of these rectangles is delta y and then the width in this case our first one our greater values this is going to be the function f of y and then we'll subtract the smaller ones which is our one in red here so this is g of y 
So overall, we're going to be taking a look at the integral. So our lower bound was negative 1. And then our next point of intersection up here at positive 2. And we're going to take f of y minus g of y. And then we have times dy. So all of the values, all the x values for my graph of f of y, within our interval, they're all greater than all the x values for the graph of g of y. So that's why we're doing f of y minus g of y. And just to plug those two functions in, so we have y plus 2 for the first one, and then we'll subtract the second one, which is y squared, and times dy. So it looks like we can just split this up. We can use our antiderivative rules. So I'm just going to go down the line, and let's see what we end up with. So the first one, that's going to be y squared over 2. Our second one, so the antiderivative of 2 is 2y. Two and then here, our last one, we have negative y squared. So the antiderivative to that is going to be y cubed over 3. And then this whole thing, we're going to evaluate this. Our bounds were negative 1 to 2. Okay, and to finish this up, we just need to plug in our upper and our lower bounds. So plugging in 2, we're going to have 2 squared over 2 and then plus 2 times 2, and our last one will be 2 cubed over 3. And then from that, we're going to subtract plugging in the lower bound, so negative 1 squared over 2, plus 2 times negative 1, and then we have negative 1 cubed over 3. And I'm going to do a little bit of simplifying, just to see what we get. So 2 squared is 4, and then if I divide that by 2, it's going to be 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 cubed is 8, so we have minus 8 cubed. And then in our second set of parentheses, that's going to be a positive 1 half, minus 2. And then our negative 1 cubed will be negative, but that will cancel out with this negative, so that's going to be plus 1 third. And if we fully simplify this, we are going to end up with 9 over 2, or as a decimal, this will be 4.5 square units. So in other words, the area in between the two graphs, this is going to be 4.5 square units. So overall, that's how we find the area between two graphs by partitioning the y-axis. As I said, it's very similar to what we were doing before by partitioning the x-axis. However, in this case, and most often, we're going to be dealing with functions in terms of y instead of functions in terms of x. So if you have a couple graphs and you notice that they don't pass the vertical line test, or if you just notice more generally that the left and the right borders of the region that you're looking at, if those are your functions, well, then we can switch it up and we can partition along the y-axis to help make the process a little simpler. Oh, 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 oh,